Salam everyone. My name is Arwa. Salam Arwa. Are you ready to have a fantastic and fabulous time today? I'm glad to be here, Arwa. Important announcement. Before we start, I want everyone to be safe. So let's make sure you follow these three rules. One, never say your full name. You can use your nickname or first name, but not full name. Two, never ever mention or share your address, phone number, email, or any other personal and important information. Three, only join in online chats and video conferencing if you have your parents' permission. Remember, we want you to have fun and be safe. And with that, let's start. Yay, let's start. We're gonna stomp our feet really fast as I count to 10. Ready, set, bismillah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Good job, you did great. Thank you, Arwa. Thank you for participating. Ready for the top five? Drum roll, please. Take it away, Naya. Welcome to the fabulous, fantastic, funky, and far out five. My name is Anaya, and today's top fives are the five most beautiful gemstones in the world. At number five is amethyst. Amethysts are large purple crystals that look amazing. At number four is laced agate. This stone looks so good, you want to eat it. Doesn't it look like a layered cake? At number three is Moonstone. This luminous blue rock looks like it glows from within. At number two is Florence. This is a favorite both because it has wonderful formation and colors too. Blues, greens, purples, and even pinks. If blue is your favorite color, you will agree with number one. At number one is blue as you write. This amazing gemstone is rich blue in color and can grow into amazing crystal forms. Thank you so much, Inaya. I love hearing about those top fives. In the chat box, tell me how you're feeling. Do you feel shy, anxious, excited, happy, or scared? Let's practice different emotions right now, as if we're in front of a mirror. Can you show me a sad face? Oh no, oh no, those are two sad faces. I can't take it, oh no, stop, stop, stop. Can you show me a happy face? Come on, give us your biggest smile. Because when you're happy, you can't help it but smile. Show me all your smiling faces. Oh wow, lovely smiling faces all around. Upset. Let me see all your upset faces. Oh no, I don't think I want to see you all mad at me. Let me see your excited face. Yes, I love seeing you guys all bubbly and ready for today's show. Howdy, all you trivia taggers out there, ready for the question of the day? Let's begin. The question is... Oh, 
What is the name of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's camel? A. Arwa B. Hani or C. Qaswa If your answer is C, then you are right. Good job! Do you know what I'm doing now? Do you know? I'm relaxing my mind and body. Want to try with me? Give it a try! Let's begin. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last time. Inhale. Exhale. Looks like you're ready. Let's welcome Farhan Chacha. Assalamu alaikum, Farhan Chacha. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. And assalamu alaikum to everybody. Excited to be here today to share with you another amazing story about a very amazing person. Today, we are going to talk about a woman by the name of Nuseiba bint Kab. Do you know any Nusaybas in your life? Maybe one of your friends, or maybe your name, or your family. Her name was Nusayba bint Kaab. Let's say it together. Nusayba bint Kaab. Good job. Nusayba was a very special woman. And she was very strong, and she was very brave. The Prophet ﷺ, he lived in a city called Mecca. And when Mecca, the people of Mecca weren't, were giving him a hard time. And eventually it got to a point where they were trying to kick him out of his home city of Mecca and he had to move somewhere else, but he didn't know where to go. And so he began telling the message of Islam to different people and different tribes from different cities and places to see who would accept. And then there was a small group of people who came from a city called Medina. And that city, they, a small group, only six, had come to Mecca and they accepted the message of Islam. And so the next year, another group came, Prophet Sallallahu was still in Mecca. And then the next year, another group came and they were 12. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, you know what, we got a big enough number now, I'm gonna send back with you one of my closest friends. And he was a young man, his name was Mus'ab ibn Umayr. And so the Prophet Sallallahu sent Mus'ab ibn Umayr with the 12 Ansari men uh, back, to Me back to Medina. And he went there and he began teaching Islam to the people. And guess what? When he went, so many people joined the Muslim Ummah and they accepted Islam. And one of those people was Nusayba. So when they came back the next year again to meet the Prophet when the Prophet was still in Mecca, 70 men came and only two women came. But Nusayba was one of those women because she was a go-getter. She wanted to be there to meet the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca and she wanted to tell him directly there that I am, I believe in you and I'm here to support you. And so she was there and she came to Mecca and she gave a pledge to the Prophet ﷺ, just like all the men did that we are going to believe in you and we're going to protect you and we're going to be there for you. And so they went back to Medina and eventually the Prophet ﷺ, he himself moved to Medina. Now Nusayba, she was a brave woman and there's so many cool stories about her and I can't tell you all of them, but I'm going to tell you one. One that really highlights how special she was. There was a battle that happened called the Battle of Uhud. And the Battle of Uhud was, was a battle in which the Muslims, they were attacked by the people of Mecca. That they, they were angry with the Muslims and they wanted to attack them and so they sent this huge army. There was three thousand soldiers and the Muslims only had 700 
And so the Muslims got ready for the battle and the Prophet ﷺ prepared the, the army and they made a nice strategy how they were going to fight. And the Muslims were, win when the battle started, the Muslims were actually winning the battle by the help of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, even though they were outnumbered. But then something happened. The, some of the Muslims that were on a small mountain, they had bow and arrows to shoot the bad guys when they were coming. They went down because they thought the battle was over. And so that's when one of the non-Muslims saw that and he had 200 horsemen with him. And they attacked the Muslims and they came from behind. So the Muslims thought the battle was over. They thought they won. They were putting their stuff down. They were getting the, the like swords and shields and armor that the bad guys left behind. And then all of a sudden, there were 200 horsemen behind them attacking them. And so they didn't know what to do. So the Muslims that were in the front went to the back and they started fighting. And then the, the Muslims ranks, their rows were broken and it kind of became chaotic. And then something happened. Somebody sent a rumor, a message that uh, somebody made a rumor that the Prophet ﷺ died. So then Muslims heard that news when they were on the battlefield. And because there was so much chaos, nobody knew where the Prophet ﷺ was. And then when they heard he died, some people gave up. They thought, oh no, we lost. The Prophet ﷺ is dead. So some people, they, they left the battle, started walking back to Medina. Some people climbed up a mountain called the Mountain of Uhud where the battle happened. And Nusayb she saw that. And she said, what are you guys doing? You can't leave. And so, and the Prophet was still alive. He didn't die. And so she saw somebody just threw his sword and shield down and was leaving. And so she saw the Prophet was alive. So she grabbed his sword. Nusayba was there, but she wasn't there to fight. She was there to help people. She was there if there's anybody who had a cut and needed, you know, needed bandages and medical help. She was there with other women like Fatima and Aisha Anhuma and other women who came to help the people who got injured. But when she saw what happened and the Prophet was alone with only a few companions and the bad guys were all coming to him and he saw the Muslims thought you know it was over and they, they ran away some of them ran away she picked up the sword and a shield and she jumped in that's how brave she was even though there were soldiers with armors and horses and big weapons she said I'm going to defend the Prophet so she went there and she went next to the Prophet and she was defending him with all her strength and she was picking up the sword and fighting and then what happened? She said that her teacher, remember the name of the, the young man who the Prophet sent to, 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 to Medina? His name was Musab, Musab ibn Umayr. He was also there and he was actually holding the flag of the Muslims in that battle. And when the, when the bad guys see the flag, they attack the flag because they think that the flag is like the symbol of the army. And if the flag is standing, that means the army is doing good. But if the flag falls down, that means the army is losing. And so Musab had the flag and he saw that the bad guys were trying to get to the Prophet Sallallahu And so Musab said, you know, I need to save the Prophet. So he took the flag and he waved it high in the sky. So to draw attention away from the, the Prophet Sallallahu And so the bad guys saw that and they started going towards Musab. And there was one man, his name was Abdullah ibn Qamiya. He was a bad guy. He saw Musab. And he took his horse and he began galloping toward Musab. And Nusayba, she says she was watching this. She was defending the Prophet who was nearby. Musab knew the Prophet was nearby and he was trying to save the Prophet himself. And so Abdullah ibn Qabi'ah, he took his sword and he hit Musab a few different times. And Musab, who he, 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 he died a shaheed, he died a martyr for the sake of Allah and that battle. And Nusayba knew him because he was Nusayba's teacher in Medina. And that, that hurt her a lot. But then she saw what happened next. That same bad guy, Abdullah ibn Qami'ah, after he killed Musab, he said, now I need to go to the Prophet So he turned his horse towards the Prophet and Gusu was standing in the way. Nusayba bin Ka'ab anha. She was standing there and all she had was her sword and her shield. And Abdullah, he had two armors on and he was on top of a horse and he began galloping towards the Prophet ﷺ. and Nusayba, she took out her sword and she tried to hit him, but because he had so much armor and he was on the tall horse, it didn't hurt him. And instead he hit her and she was struck with the sword on her shoulder. And she said that after that battle, it took more than one year for my, 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 my injury to heal from that, from that, from that wound that Abdullah hit her with with the sword. 
you know, one year is a long time. You know, if you break your bone, maybe you've seen your friend or you've had a cast before, you only need the cast for like six weeks and then your bone heals. She had an injury for more than one year. That's how much it hurt her, subhanAllah. But she went to the Prophet even though she got hit and she kept fighting and defending the Prophet until the Prophet he said that, I look to my left and I see Nusayba there. I look to my right and Nusayba is there. I look in front of me, I look behind me. Wherever I look, Nusayba, she was there defending the Prophet and saving him from the bad guys. And so the Prophet was so overwhelmed with, with you know, his love and appreciation for what Nusayba did. So the Prophet ﷺ called Nusayba by her nickname. Her nickname was Umm Umara. And he said, Oh Umm Umara, ask me whatever you want. And so Umm Umara looked at the Prophet ﷺ and said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I just want to be with you in paradise. And so the Prophet ﷺ, you know, he immediately raised his hands to Allah and he said, Oh Allah, make them, make Nusayba and her family my companions in Jannah. He made that du'a, and when Nusayba heard that du'a, she felt so happy. She said, this injury, my shoulder, I don't care whatever happens to me. Any, it doesn't matter. If I could be with a prophet in Jannah, then nothing else matters. And that's the lesson we learned from our beautiful hero today, Nusayba bint Ka'b, radiallahu anha. She loved the prophet so much, and she, didn't hesitate. When the moment came, she wasn't she wasn't a warrior. She was there to help people. But when she saw the need, she said, I'm not going to stand by. I'm a go-getter. I'm going to help. And so what we learned from Nusayba is that if we see somebody who needs help, we're going to help too. And we know that we learn from her that we have to love the Prophet him so much because the Prophet him did so much for us. And that's why we love him so much. And so Nusayba loved, her, loved the Prophet so much and said that, you know, my best wish, O Messenger of Allah, is to be with you in paradise. So if you want to be with a Prophet in paradise, just like Nusayba, عنها, I have some tips for you. Number one, you have to love the Prophet. That's a great question. The Prophet said, why should we love him? Number one, because he loved us so much. He loved us so, so much. He would stand up at night and he would be praying for us even before we're born. And you know, SubhanAllah, what's amazing is he actually wanted to meet you and he wanted to meet me. One time the Prophet he was sitting with his companions and he said, I would have loved to meet my, my um, brothers and sisters. So the Sahaba, they, they were surprised. They were like, oh, Messenger of Allah, aren't we your brothers and sisters? And the Prophet said, no, you're my companions. But my brothers and sisters are those who are going to come after me. They believe in me, but they've never even seen me. And he said, he told us that he's going to be waiting for us on the Day of Judgment at this beautiful pond of water that he's going to give us a drink. Inshallah, we ask Allah to make us all amongst those who drink from his hand. Ameen. So we should love him because he loved us so much. He loved us so, so much. But also, he gave us an amazing gift. He gave us the gift of Islam. And all the sacrifices that he went through and the struggles that he went through for 23 years. He went from being the person who was most loved by the town. Everybody knew him. His nickname was Sadiq al Amin, the trustworthy and the truthful. But after he became a prophet, many of them rejected him. And he went through a lot of difficulty. But he did that all. Why? So that you and I can also be Muslims and so we can believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he did so much for us. So we should love him because of because of what he did for us and the gift he gave us, the greatest gift of all, which is the gift of being a Muslim. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know. I'd probably meet Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He was such a great person and such a great companion of the Prophet that I'd love to meet him. Dig deep. Really think about this one. Who would you meet? I know, this is such a hard question. There's so many great ones. Don't forget, there's woman companion too, such as Aisha radiallahu anha and Khadija radiallahu anha. Make your decision and write it down below. It's been a blast. Thank you for coming. Can I count on you to come next time? Great. Salam.